this moment. Father, we thank you. We we'll bless your name. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for sending your word with power. Thank you for what you are set to do now. We we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, take us forward by your word this afternoon. And let the best of us in leadership come out. In Jesus' mighty name. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord and please be seated? This is Living Faith Church Leadership Forum. If you are not a member of the church or in the leadership of the church, uh, you will please excuse us. This is mainly for everyone belonging to Living Faith Church, particularly in the leadership. So in case you have thought otherwise, you can please excuse us and God bless you as you do so. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm privileged of God and his servant to take us through the second teaching the second day of the leadership forum. And I appreciate the leadership for this. In Jesus' name. I'll be taking us on understanding spiritual hierarchy. Understanding spiritual hierarchy. You cannot be outstanding your leadership position and discharge of your responsibility without understanding. You must understand where you belong, to whom you are reporting, to whom you are answerable, who is leading, and who is to follow, to be followed. Understanding spiritual hierarchy. We are not in the same. Leadership is in levels. And whatever level you find yourself, must know the next level. Who is responsible to you and to whom you are responsible. Understanding spiritual hierarchies. And I'll be taking the text from Romans 13. Romans chapter 13 reading from verses 1 to 3. That will be the basis of this paper. Let every soul, how many soul, be subject unto higher powers, hierarchies. For there is no power but of God. The power that be are ordained of God. Verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, that is content with the power, disobey the power, despise the power. Resisted the ordinance of God. And they that receive shall receive themselves condemnation. That is condemnation. For rulers are not terrors to good works, but to the evil. Without them not be afraid of the power. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. God expects us to be subjects to Iraqis. In fact, from that scripture, God is the author of spiritual Iraqis. There is no power but of God. And all the power that be are ordained of God. 
Particularly in the spiritual environment, we must have this consciousness that no one assumes a position by his own power. Every placement is by the inspiration of the Almighty or by direct instruction from Him or by His guidance or the leaders for appropriate placement. A spiritual hierarchy is a biblical concept. If you check Exodus 18.21, you see the example there. Numbers 11.16, you see the example there. Moses will have died of stress. Because there were no hierarchies. He was the man, one man in a thousand. And in Numbers 11, 16, the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me 70 men who are elders of history. He didn't say gather all the men. 70 men. They are the one in the leadership. Whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and the officers. So there are officers. Over them. And bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with you. It's not everybody. These ones have been selected. They have been separated to lead. And the wisdom was given from Exodus 18.21. From Exodus 18.21, God said, Hey, Moses, there should be hierarchies. Exodus 18.21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people that is, you choose them. You select them out of all the people. Thou shalt provide from all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, eighteen confessiousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousand, and rulers of hundred, and rulers of fifty, and rulers of ten. So, rulers of ten is not the same as rulers of thousands. <laughs> and there should be no... Co there is no, it's not inferiority or superiority. That's just what God wants. You can say, I'm also a leader. Yes, you are a leader, but you have, you have your level. That's hierarchy. So God expects that there should be spiritual hierarchies. And spiritual hierarchy is a biblical concept. That was what keep on growing. Until God spoke to him, Hey, I want to talk to those in leadership. The 70 elder, the officers, say, let them come to the tabernacle. Let them stand there by you. So, you have to get understanding of spiritual hierarchy, which will enhance the flow of order. Yesterday, we had teaching about the power of order. Without hierarchy, there will be orderliness. Everyone will just do what he thinks best in his eyes. And go free for it. You can imagine if everybody is given order. So which one are we to follow? <laughs> that must respect spiritual hierarchy. Everyone can give order. So it is hierarchy as structure. That make us to know who we are to follow and who has the final say. As far as that spiritual authority is concerned. So, in spiritual hierarchy, it is establishing a structure to run a spiritual organization. There should be a structure. And any organization that does not have a structure, according to the word of the servants of God is says with some rupture. Without a structure for any organization, there is no future. Even spiritual organization. You don't even run spiritual organization by just praying. <laughs> there must be a structure. Because in spite of your prayer and binding and losing, 
there will be confusion without instruction. So no organization can thrive without an established hierarchies. You can't go forward. No organization can fulfill its objective or its purpose without established hierarchy. So what is in our local station are not just there for fun. They are to be understood. The structure there should be understood. The structure there should be followed. The structure there should be respected. Because no one places himself there. It has its source in God. It's a biblical concept. In case you are the father and your son is the head of the station, <laughs> as soon as he's the head of the station, he still has final say concerning that station. If you do, it's your last born. Are you hearing it? Because the moment is placed there in the hierarchy to lead the local station, he has been empowered with spiritual authority to ensure the smooth running of that place. So you can call him after meeting and say, come, come here. You have the biological father, come here, come here, come here. Why are you saying that to people? Don't say that. This is what you are to say. It's not possible. In spiritual authority, thank God, we are to respect our fathers. In fact, that was a bow before a man with worry here and respect the face of an old man. That's in his own regard. But not as far as functional hierarchy is concerned. For example, Let's see example of spiritual hierarchy. Establishment of captain of 50, as we have seen in Exodus 18.21. Captains of 100. Captains of 1,000. Captains of 10. <laughs> they are not all captains of thousands. They are still captains of 10. Why? Because they cannot all be the same. Praise the Lord. They cannot all be the same. Somebody is there. It is ten people that he commands. So, it's a chain of command. Another person, it is fifty. Praise the Lord. And also, an example again is the institution of seventy elder among three million people. Seventy, not one thousand. Seventy. That's what God judge will be enough to take over the administration of the place. And also, that's in Numbers 11, 16. And also, in terms of the call offices, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. We see how God has arranged the order. God has set some in the church. First apostle. I hope you are seeing it. He said first, that means hierarchy. At the apex, apostles. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that miracle, then gifts of healing, helps, government, diversity of tongues. As I was reading this, I said, ah, miracle seems to be the most popular. I hear that half miracle. <laughs> It's likely to command attention and some respect and something, but not in hierarchies. See where miracles are placed. Well, some people are just gifted for miracle, But see the arrangement. You don't, because of that, begin to despise the apostle. And then the office of the prophet doesn't matter to you because you are doing some miracles. And people are clapping for you. You see hierarchies. Secondly, the prophets... Totally teachers. Can you see? After that, what? Miracles. I was surprised. At the moment people see miracles, they are forgotten all the hierarchies. The man of miracle, they clap for him. They say, we want that pastor. We don't want that other one. They 
there is hierarchies. And the Lord give us understanding. So, apostles are not the same class as pastors. They are not in the same class of deacons and elders. Deacons and elders are also not in the same class with pastors. And there's no need to be struggling. It is just God's order. His spiritual hierarchies. So, all these are responsibility given to man from God to direct the affairs of an organization and the people. Leaders are spiritual appointees. They are not the one appointing themselves. They are spiritually appointed onto position of authority. And let's begin to understand the fundamental spiritual hierarchy. Spiritual authority is not intended to create room for superiority or inferiority. Inferiority. It's not that this one is superior, this one is... No, 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 no. It's not competition of flesh. It's not about people. It's about the system. So, it might, you might be older. You may even feel you are better. But the moment someone is placed there, the system is running that way. And it must be respected. Praise the Lord. Romans 12, 3 to 5. Just anyone chosen by God at any given time could leave the system. Anyone. Once God has approved it, then it should be allowed to lead. It can be your turn tomorrow or it can never be your turn. It doesn't matter. But just be sure, anyone, once it's there, it is the office that must be respected. Because respecting the office is respecting God who plus put that man in that office in order not to run into problem. And to despise spiritual authority is indirectly despising God. Who is the defined authority? Romans 32. So when you despise any man's instruction who is in a position of authority, you are not despising that man. So you look beyond the man. You may even look, you have to look beyond his error. His grammar may not be correct like your own. Are you hearing? Maybe when he's even speaking, you have one man of correction in what he say. He doesn't know past tense and present tense. He that's not what you are judging. It's not that man. It is the position that is given to him and then is placed on that system to give order. And no one is exempted from being under some form of authority. Or the other. In fact, if you don't know where you are in authority, you will have problem. Everyone is under one authority or the other. And to play the game of I'm not under authority, there will be chaos and you will run to problem. People will feel free. Now, I know what I'm doing. Nobody can confuse me. I've been in this church for how many years now? Mm -mm. Once a leader says, stop there, you stop. Come here, you come. It's not the time of your being in church that is being respected. It's not your program, not the age that is being respected. Once a person is placed there, it's not that you have been in that position before also. If you are not the one there, the one there now must be respected. You see say, ah, I've been church board from the time church board started. You, when are you coming in that your own order now? You are ordering me, you are instructing me. No, no. Once it's there, it's the one there now. And as long as it's there, it has authority. We have to understand that very well. No one is exempted from being under some form of authority or the other. And when you are ignorant of spiritual authority, it can be disastrous. You go and check what happened. In Numbers 12, 1 to 16, Aaron and Miriam, they thought by reason of association and family relationship, <laughs> they can rub shoulder with Moses. And God dealt with them and put them where they belong. If there's any leader among you, any prophet, because Miriam was also a prophetess. Because, hey, if we're among the prophets or prophetess, 
There is the prophet. This is the prophet. And you must respect him. Even when we are all pastors, there are still pastors of pastors who must be respected. Even in Dickin, the Dickin board chairman, as long as he's there, has the authority to run the Dickin assembly. The elders council chairman is in charge for his tenure. You can't say, well, they ordained him an elder uh, 15 years after I was ordained. Mm -mm. He's now the one in charge. He's the leader now. And he must be respected. We have to take note of that. Spiritual authority demands submission and obedience. Let everyone be subject to higher power. God, there is no power but of God. And Hebrews 13, 17. You have to submit. You have to obey. You have to submit. You have to obey. No matter what, you have to submit. You have to obey. Obey them that have to rule over you. And submit yourself. For they watch for your soul. As they that must give a can. That they may do it with joy. And not with grief. For that is unprofitable to you. Obey. As long as someone is in authority. Respect that spiritual authority. And as long as he's there. He must be respected. What are the benefits of spiritual hierarchy? Submitting and obeying spiritual hierarchy. It guarantees flow of spiritual authority. There's a flow. We know who is next. You know what is next. You know who is in charge of this and that. You say, I'm a man of the authority. Matthew 8. I say to this one, go, he go. And to that one, come. And he come. Matthew 8, 18 to 19. There is a flow. It guarantees flow. There is a flow. Everyone knows where he comes in. There is a chain of command. Who is next? Who come next? And who take over next? And another benefit of spiritual hierarchy, it makes individual official accountable. Once you are there, you know you are accountable for your responsibility because you are placed there. There are specific function, a specific responsibility with accountability. Act 6, 2 to 4. Another benefit of spiritual authority, Hierarchy is that it gives no room to ambiguity of roles and function. Everyone has a defined role or function. It is specified in the hierarchy. Everything is to do one, another person is to do the other. Another person is to take over where the other one stop. So it gives no room for ambiguity. Everyone knows what to do. And so there's a flow of command and then there's a flow of authority and finally benefit of spiritual hierarchy it prefer this protect a system from chaos and crisis you can imagine if we don't know who is the resident pastor so anyone can be led on next sunday to preach somebody may just come that the lord spoke to me in the night fisher that I'm the one taking message today. Can that happen in our system? Even if God the Almighty spoke to him, Lord Jesus, Holy Ghost, he cannot. Even if he hear it, he will, he will despise it. Why? Somebody is there. Who is in charge of preaching? The resident pastor. However, if the resident pastor says, well, go. There's a flow of authority. He can delegate. There is delegation. But without it, the man to preach is already known. And that's the man they are expecting at the other. By the time they see another person there, <laughs> there will be questions. And there will be crisis. May the Lord help all of us more than ever before to respect spiritual authority. And wherever we are located in any of the structure, may you be submissive and be obedient to that authority. Shall we stand on our feet? Help me, Lord, with this understanding to know where I fix it, to be submissive to spiritual authority and hierarchy. Lift up your voice and pray that prayers. Lord, send your help. Lord, send your help. And all of us with this understanding will perform better 
Lord, help me to perform better my responsibility. And wherever I'm found, let me not be found despising your authority. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. As a result of this leadership forum, I see a better us in all our responsibility. Imagine to the glory of God. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Uh, the apostle over this commission who has taken out of his much time to be here as we receive instructions from him let's give Jesus a big hand right now the Lord a bigger clap offering Praise the Lord. Shall we lift up our hands to heaven in one minute and bless the name of the Lord for his good and for his mercies and deals forever. precious name we have given thanks have we been blessed since this forum began give the Lord a big hand for the blessings amen please be seated I believe one of the greatest things that ever happened to us as a ministry is the production of this book. How many will give a big hand to Jesus? And that shows us who we are, our mission, and our approach to the pursuit of the mission. of this commission is not subjective to anybody's opinion. Take it or leave it. The constitution of the nation is not subjective to your opinion. You break it, you pay for it. I pray that this manual will walk in your hand. Yes. That this manual will walk in your hand. order to build an organization and it takes order to sustain it. God by this book has only established his pattern for us as a ministry. And we are under obligation to run with it. My prayer again is that everyone here, every one of us, we earn well done from God as we run with this. It is perhaps the force of its kind on this continent. We are the details of a Christian organization is put together and the operational engagement outlined.
Let me tell you this testimony and it will help you. When God gave a particular book, the Church of God in Christ, Black Book, they call it, is the operational manual. I was so desperate. I called the U.S. and I was asking two of my sons, look for this book by all means and get me a copy. By the following morning, the bishop of that church in Nigeria, we never knew they had any church network in Nigeria. The bishop of that church in Nigeria came to our office. And I was the first one he met. And I asked him, it was an elderly man, sir, can I help you? He said, yes, um, the bishop of Church of God in Christ in Nigeria. I said, is it the same Church of God in Christ in America? He said, yes. Do you have the black book? <laughs> he said, yes. He said, bring it to me. I said, no, no, somebody will follow you now and collect it. Now, last night, I was a desperation to get that book. This morning, the book walked into the house. God's hand is upon this manual. We explored about 9 to 12 different church organizations around the world, including the Catholic, the Methodist, the Baptist, the First Choir, the Anglican. I mean... About 12, 14 of them exhaustively finding out what must be behind their sustainability. Order. What is it? Order. You don't believe in order, you cannot even last in your Christian faith. You need order. Now, let me tell you what to do to secure your own future and days. You know, the eyes of the Lord running to and fro in all the earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him. Second Chronicles 16, 9. God is watching each one's disposition, each one's action, each one's actions behind the scene. God is watching manipulation of figures. God is watching inflation of prices. God is watching. How do I save myself? Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11 and 12. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, or rather, expose them, reprove them. If you see evil and carry your eyes away, you'll be the next victim. I've lived my life like that. It's not about not doing wrong. You can't do wrong, and I will pretend not to see it. If you lie and you are saying something, I say, no, this is what you said. I've lived my life like that to save my life of being virused by virus people. So you see evil, expose it. Expose it. Expose it. It's the only way to police this manual to deliver. Even among the twelve, there was a son of perdition. You will not be a son of perdition. Yeah. If you overlook evil, you'll be its next victim. Now, let me tell you this. Everybody knows that like begets like. Can I have you say that? Can you say it convincingly? The 
moment the virtue of this commission is not reflecting in your life, you are not there. Like begets like. I want you to use your leadership opportunity to advance your destiny, not to drown your destiny. both from the pastorate and the sanctuary uh, bo statutory body members we are of grave concern I mean grave concern grave concern excesses of all kinds but there will still be some righteous people in there whose mouths have been clogged Who are closing up their destiny without knowing. All you need is hey, no. Not when I'm here. This can be. There is no system in the world that does not have. God oriented people. It was only belief. Who will stand for the truth only at all times to secure their own glorious destiny? To secure their own glorious destiny? destiny. Who will stand for the truth at all costs? May you be that individual. Amen. May you be that individual. Amen. May you be that individual. Amen. I can say boldly, this publication is highly inspired. And in case you don't know what that means, in the next 50 years from the time it was published, it is not allowed to be re-edited. So, it will not be re-edited if some people on 100, 120. So relax, this is what you'll be using now. <laughs> Praise God. This is the secondary Bible of this church. The earlier you enjoy relating with it, and the faster it, the better for you. privilege in this commission. I don't want anyone here to be a victim of this great move of the spirit. We have also heard of gang ups uh, in various assemblies, ethnic, ethnic groupings. You know, you are either spiritual or carnal, you cannot be neutral. You are either spiritual or carnal, you cannot be neutral. I got the mantle of Kenneth Hagen. Are we from the same village? And one of the great benefactors of the mandate on Copeland. Are we from the same state? We had a man in our church in Kaduna who was trying to introduce politics into church. He said, have you noticed that there is nobody from our area among the leadership caucus? Or oh, you don't think so? Check now. One, two, three. They are all from one geopolitical area. So it's lost. It's lost. Beware of carnality. Beware of carnality. Beware of carnality. Beware of carnality. From henceforth, I must never hear of any ethnic grouping in any church. I would 
throw you out. If I hear, I will throw you out. The church of the living God. There is no racial inclination here. We are all born of one blood. We, are, we have the same one father. The same DNA of our father runs in us. Don't bring the devil into the system. Respect tribes on mutual platform. A pastor that does not respect the flock should not expect to be respected. I'm not talking about statutory bodies, I'm talking about members. There is a way you will speak to an individual. And you will lose all the respect in one minute. Come here. Who do you think you are? I'm a pastor. What nonsense? Somebody was harassing a policeman many years ago. Stupid, gold, animal. The He said to his superior officer, excuse me, enough. Enough! Enough! The superior officer lost all the respect in one minute. And all the people that got to say, he serves you well. Um, you, you think he's a, he's, he's a madman? You think he's a fool? You are shouting all this time, he didn't talk to you? He said, I'll give you your clothes. Take your clothes and go. You don't get respect. You earn respect. So let there be mutual respect one for another so we can keep the work going in the name of Jesus. Must learn to respect the members. The statutory body members must learn to respect the pastors. But no without the truth prevailing. The truth of the order must continue to prevail. No pastor has a right to initiate and execute a project. It is not allowed in the mandate. No financial report from any pastor should be considered authentic without the audit support paper and the FMC. It's simply order. It's order. It's order. It's order. The church operates two great ministries to keep it growing. The altar and the table. And these two are serving a common goal. To advance the work of the Lord. So we must learn to work together. And keep things going. I don't know how much offering was last Sunday in this church. I don't know the one the Sunday before. Maybe the Sunday people told me, but it's not part of the things I study. If I have it. Allow the order installed to run. A word of caution. Any financial manipulation in the house of God is a risk. Any financial manipulation in the house of God is a risk. Any financial manipulation in the house of God is a risk. Therefore, beware. Not only to
to be a perpetrator, but you may never be a collaborator. You must never be a collaborator. You must never be a collaborator. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Let me share this with you. One of the times in those years, they brought in some budget for Shiloh. And the people in charge challenged the budget. And the fellows in charge of that unit said, one of them said, that's where we make our money. On this ground. On this ground. On this ground. If you want to buy properties here now, we have to buy it quietly. Because before you wake up to know it, we what? Somebody went somewhere and asked them to inflate the money. The owner of the party came, he said, they came to me to inflate the money, but I want to sell the property. This is the amount I want. In the house of God, where you should be saying, someday I will buy this property for Jesus. When it should be in your heart that someday I will do something greater than this for Jesus. form of financial impropriety, financial manipulation is always a risk. Always a risk. You will not fall victim of it. Now, what I'm here to say this afternoon is this. Save your head. As I still remember, you see anything going on behind the scene, expose it. You hear them talking quietly, go and hear what they are saying. They, we are together in this committee, what are you saying? Amen. Praise God. If you get to know those who know me very early in life, you know that's where I behave. You know that's where I behave. And that's how I've secured my life. the best of time. Can I take this? Growth has just begun in our church. So order must be properly established and properly pursued. Properly established and properly pursued. This is the church of Christ and it shall remain so for life. This is the church of Christ and shall remain so for life. Somebody said you have nominated some people for leadership and you find out there are other people that are put inside. Why not? Nomination does not mean appointment. The people that are ratifying it know more than you do about those individuals. And they have applied their higher knowledge to determine who comes there. Amen. Do you know what other people nominated? So how do you come to claim that what you nominate is not taken? Others nominated from the same group. Just be spiritual. Whatever we come out with in our process is the final. Amen. You have nominated three people, only one will be there. And they can't find anyone out of the three. They throw them out and get somebody else. Even in the presidency of the ministry, the outgoing president nominate read the book if the council rejects it he is given one more chance to nominate after the second chance the council chairman takes over it's a process he has prayed he has fasted yes but he must meet the required standard set for that office relax you are in good hands as far as we are concerned here at the end of affairs, we don't do this. And we'll never do that till Jesus comes. Praise God. But please, nomination does not mean confirmation. It does not mean affirmation. The process is there for all to see. And it's not political appointment anyway. It's for service. Glory to God. Glory to God.
Glory to God. There are things it's better to hear them from the horse's mouth. That's why the horse is speaking. Amen. We don't impose leaders. We appoint leaders. You don't nominate for pastors to come to your church. We appoint pastors to go to that church. Impose is God. The details are here if you will read. The handbook is there to further expatiate on any aspect that may be confusing. And if at the end of the day there is a question somewhere, there is where to push it to. I want to believe that the year 2017 will be a most orderly year. And every time order is, is installed, growth is enhanced. Acts chapter 19, verses 4 and 5. Acts 19, 4 and 5. Every talk. Is it 16? Sorry, 16, 4 and 5. Acts 16, 4 and 5. Every time order is installed, growth is enhanced. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. Order is ordained from the headquarters. They were to keep it in all the other quarters. The headquarters installs the order. Other quarters are to keep the order. Verse 5. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. That will be our experience in 2017. Maybe we'll have some change of gas in some places. Okay. Every new person on board, I welcome you in the name of Jesus. You must improve on what you met. That is the true meaning of progress. And anyone that will not be chanced, please, before anybody will dub you irresponsible, quickly surrender that by reason of your job, you may not be disposed. That will be far more honorable than being missing in every meeting. Please, in case the people who ratified your appointment were not aware of your kind of schedule or they don't understand how you wrote it in your form, please bow out honorably. God deserves all the honor. God deserves all the honor. God deserves all the honor. You may have a job that does not allow room for such meetings. Please signify on time so that some other fellows can be given the opportunity. And when you have time in future, and it's also your privilege to be nominated, then you can get back on board. Jesus is Lord. If in the course of your tenure, a new business opens up that keeps in the air on the road most of the time, honorably signify and then somebody else will take that position. Amen. Everyone in this church is important to God and to his agenda on the earth. Let's see every opportunity as simply an opportunity and endeavor to make the most of it. For all the new statutory body members coming on board, receive grace for maximum delivery. The same grace of my life that has kept me bouncing the last 40 years, I decree the release of same on your life. You will never miss your reward. All the ones whose tenors have just been completed, your labor during your tenor will speak into your future. And I pray 
pray for wherever carnality is reigning in anyone's life in our leadership platform I pray for deliverance right now in the name of Jesus I pray for deliverance in the name of Jesus let me also address the issue of pastors that are making demands on our realm with demands, demand, demand it doesn't show responsibility it doesn't show responsibility it doesn't show responsibility allow the process to run follow the due order amen follow the due order follow the due order any adverse report this coming year will be treated with dispatch a platform has been set to be sure that no no report is allowed to be delayed an appropriate action will be taken. Somebody also expressed a concern about welfare matter. Please make sure you understand the move of the spirit by time in this commission. No church has ever grown on welfare platform. Welfare in the New Testament was an interpersonal issue. People ministering to the needs of one another. Can I tell you this? If you are a seed sower, when you need help, it will come your way. If you are not a seed sower, when it's harvest time, nothing will come. This church is not going back to where we used to be. We are to be liberated by the word of faith. So take the word serious. Make word practice your lifestyle. Most of those issues will never even arise. Somebody came to this church in August. He started paying tight in August. He said, within three months, everything turned. He said, I'm just back from Europe now. He gave his testimony last Sunday. There are those sitting down there who have never paid tight in their life. One arrogant person from one of our churches. He said, I will never pay tight all my life. I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. Then it's not done with the disease. Then you're asking to church to come and pay. No. no. Go and develop your faith and live a healthy life. Walk in the covenant and walk sickness and disease away from your life. Somebody just has a little challenge and the Lord will tell, look, my son there has a challenge. Go there and respond. Because every sea must enjoy returns. Well, I pray against sickness and disease here. Uh, my son, my Jay is here. Somebody came down to our church here and we were going to pay his money for medical care. And he took him as he was going to the hospital. He begged you. He said, I'm sorry, I am not sick. I just need money. Two of us. Just because we say go and pay his money. And as a doctor, he needed to see that doctor to find out what he wants to do and what he wants to do after next and pay the money. Somebody met me this year. My son is in the hospital. He's at a dying state. Please, I need help. Compassion naturally came upon me. But I said, go and see the pastor there and register your details. Then somebody walked in and saw him, and saw him there. <laughs> he called the pastor and said, excuse me, be careful with that man. <laughs> Sir, there was no child in the hospital. There was no child. That is this year. And I mean, as little anointed as I am. 
people. God told me, stop it. And we have stopped it. Now go ahead and be here you want another's body. Because you know the person. So it's easier for you to relate with them. I said a man came to this church to deceive me after early morning prayer. To deceive me as small as I am. Away with the devil forever. If you are sick, we pray for you. And you get healed with your faith. And the moment you know there is no money there, your faith will rise. something, none of you will know sickness again.
in line with that. And then you need to go and chew on what you have heard. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, before we share the goodness, let's pray for God's servant, the apostle by this commission, that the fire in him will keep burning, the grace will keep multiplying, the oil will ever be fresh. Let's thank, let's pray for him. Father, let the fire in him keep burning. Let the grace keep re getting renewed. Let the oil be ever fresh. Let the oil be ever fresh. Let grace be freshly imparted. Let fire be ever, ever fresh, freshly burning. To the glory and praise of your name. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, let grace multiply. Let blessing increase. Let focus be intensified. Oh, yes. Somebody pray with me right now. Somebody pray with me right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Will you please, as a family, to the right, to your left, hold your neighbor's hand, and let's pray in the Holy Ghost for over, you know, oversight over all of our assembly. Everything will keep moving forward. We will lose no soul. All the souls shall be fully safe, strong. The church shall remain strong. The church shall keep moving forward. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's fortify ourselves and destroy every opposition against the well-being of the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Somebody pray. Pray right now. Corporate prayer in all viewing centers, in all stations, home and abroad. Unitedly, let's pray in the Holy Ghost, tearing down barriers, every opposition, every force of darkness, and fortifying ourselves, getting stronger, moving forward, advancing, moving forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. On the lock, if you get me in the clump, on the ski, the armor, not to know so zoa. As is a zoe, as is a zoe, as is a zoe, as is a zoe. Ravine, a kimi, a cotono, no sikini, no maranakte, no tuada. Oh, yes. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you, my King. Blessed be God. In Jesus' precious name. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' wonderful name. The same time is when we are meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m. for the last session. Let's keep our hands still joined as we share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen.